and standing for prayer. And remember the ones that are traveling today. And remember the ones that are on our prayer list. And I don't know the name, but God does. Uh, young Norton shared with us a couple of years ago about a young girl, 14, with cancer. And, uh, thought she was going to be all right and uh, cancer has come back in a couple of places and they've sent her home. Nothing that they can do. 16 years old. Uh, you know, we think we have trouble when we hear something like that. And let's remember them and also uh, a lot of us here today know a man named Charles Birdwell had surgery. I think I told about it Wednesday night. And, uh, he had some internal bleeding and they tried to drain it. They had to open him back up and uh, go in and put a drain tube in. And, uh, he hadn't been able to feel in his lower extremities, uh, his legs, his feet. And then uh, David's wife and Nick's having some back problems, neck problems, and also vision problems. So we need to remember them in prayer. And remember our folks that are traveling already for the holidays. Do you have a prayer request you want to mention, Brother Dick? Brother Ronnie. I called you when uh, Mama fell out of the wheelchair. Yes, I meant to mention her. And when she got back to the hospital, regulations is you can't put rails on the bed, so she fell out of the bed. Oh. And she looks like she's been run through a bush hog. Oh. She's not even recognizable, and she. Jana come home Thursday and is probably going back Tuesday. And Mama just not doing good at all. And my prayer is that she won't last long. She just turned 98 Thanksgiving Day. Yes, and Jana is going to the doctor tomorrow. She is totally exhausted. I bet. And, uh, but I just told her just a minute ago uh, go to the doctor Monday, get on the plane Tuesday, and stay till it's over. Yeah. So keep them in prayer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you look around, everybody's got trouble because Satan is alive and well on planet Earth. And uh, we sure need to pray for each other. Pray for our country. Anybody else? Brother Ronnie, please continue to remember our kids. Uh, our Dickie, open us in prayer, please. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege of coming to your house again. Father, we just ask you to be with each and every request here. 
They just go from A to Z across the board. But I couldn't think of a better place in the world to bring up your problems than right here in front of everybody to pray for us this morning. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for that opportunity that you provide us with a house that we can come to and feel at home in. Yes. And being your children, we can ask our Heavenly Father for all of his blessings. Lord, there's not a one of us here today that's deserving of a single solitary blessing that you give us. But Lord, we're so thankful that you are loving and giving God. Father, we just ask you today to be with us and amid all of this other stuff that's going on in the hustle and bustle and the commercial part of this time of the year, may we remember the reason for the season. Yes, Lord. And may we keep him front and foremost of all that we say and do. And Father, we just ask you this morning, as Brother Ronnie leads us today, that Lord, if there's a soul here that's not touched before they leave, may they be touched. And we just ask you today, God, that everything that we do and say is to your honor and to your glory. We ask these and all blessings in thy precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me share a couple of announcements with you. Just want to remind you that uh, our Christmas party will be next Sunday night. Don't forget that. The 18th at 6 o'clock. And uh, there will be a little more to it than our uh, Thanksgiving dinner several prizes and I don't know what all is planned. I just saw some people hiding some stuff and they told me don't look at this. <laughs> so I did and I'm not going to. I remember when I found out there wasn't Santa Claus when I looked under the bed and saw the electric train and other stuff and uh, I don't think that messed up my mind, but there's some people that think that it'll mess up your mind if you think there's a Santa Claus. Because I thought a lot of people were a lot different than they were until I found out different, but that didn't bother me. I said, yep, people are different. Art Lip Ladder proved it. People are funny. But anyway, don't forget that. Don't forget... Uh, Christmas Day, we will have church, and we were told Wednesday night of two churches, one during service, one after that canceled their services for the 25th. So uh, anybody listening to me, uh, by the way, YouTube, or if you know friends that's canceled their service and they want to go to church, bring them with you Sunday. Uh, Christmas Sunday. That'll be Christmas, I mean Sunday week. But uh, I think that's a day we certainly ought to have church. And we're going to have 11 o'clock Christmas service. Remember Brother Jim? We didn't mention him. and uh, We need to pray for him every time you pray. Uh, he has his good days and bad days and not as many good days now as he used to have and pray for the caregivers for Jeanette and the others that are taking care of this folk. That's all the announcements that I'm going to make. I'll let Nicole come and lead us in another song. My son-in-law Mike is in California working and we were privileged to have Rhonda and Derek with us yesterday and with us today. Uh, with Mike gone, she decided to come and stay the weekend with her mom and dad, and we're glad to have her and glad to have her in service today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And there's going to be so many verses, I'm not going to ask you to uh, turn to all of them. But I want to start a series <coughs> of the next three uh, 
sermon to be about Christmas. Regina and I were leaving a business establishment one day this week, or this past week, and uh, we know the manager well. And Regina said, I love the way you've got the store decorated. And she said, I can see Christ in it. And he smiled as he put his coat on and started out. And he said, you know, without Christ, there wouldn't be no Christmas. And uh, I thought, well, that's true. And so I want to share with you today uh, the story of Christmas overall, and then we'll get more specific as we get closer. And I'm looking forward to preaching Christmas Day. You don't have many of those in a lifetime where it falls on that day. But... Uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. <coughs> the Bible says, And when they were come into the house, I can get off on some rabbit trails here. We know that he was born in a barn, in a stable, laid in a manger. So Matthew's probably talking two years later here and some of these scriptures like I said will fall in different areas but it's still about the birth of Christ. I just want to point this out to you. It says and when they were come into the house not a barn here so, and then he goes on to say another word or two that tells us that Jesus is older now. They came into the house, they saw what? Not a baby. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And they've been looking for him until this time. And it says... And when they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. That's where we get the gift exchanges. They presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want to read verse 12 because it, it might fit into helping you understand some of the other scriptures I'm going to use. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. They went another way, uh, not the way that they would be expected to travel. Because Herod had already sent word to give word to the wise men, when you find this child, bring me word back again wherever he's at. He had left the stable. For I want to go worship him. We know that was a lie. Because when he found out that it was in Jerusalem and he couldn't pinpoint right where Jesus was, he gave a degree that every baby two years old and under, every boy baby, to be killed. Now, that don't tell you Satan's real. Nothing in this world will. Would you pray with me and for me before I share with you this story? Our Father, we thank you for the privilege it's ours to kneel behind this desk. Been so many requests made known today that it would be almost impossible for us as individuals to get done all the things that need to be done 
And I'm so glad in our Sunday school lesson that we read a verse that nothing is impossible with you. We thank you that the Bible says that you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for hope that we have in a life to come. We pray for all these that have been mentioned, especially for Jana's mother. And we pray for Jana as she tries to do all she can from Tennessee to Texas. And we ask your Lord to be with the others who are sick, those traveling and those working. Lord, bless them in a special way and keep us safe through the holidays. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want to, uh, and I, I do this with some sermons that I want you to remember, and I'll give you the scriptures and tell you a little bit about what they're about, but if you turn to all of them, that's all you'll be doing is turning the scriptures. But let's spell Christmas. I love to do these kind of things. You uh, can think of the first letter, and I'm sure you can think of so many things that would fit. But remember, when we get through, like Marlette pointed out, the uh, story that we had this morning about the birth of Christ and about who brought the message, Gabriel. And she pointed out to us, and I don't know if you know it or not, but uh, an angel's name that, or anybody's name like that, that ends in L is God, or sent from God, or a messenger from God. And I want you to think about it as we look at this. I just read to you, uh, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young and we know from other scriptures that it wasn't just a young child it was the Christ child it was Jesus he was the only one of his kind there's not another I'm the way the truth and the life I, no man comes to the father but by me he is the Christ. And we've got to remember that, uh, and people do it every year and probably do it out of habit or do it out of uh, time's sake. They do it uh, not even thinking, but I think it came straight from the devil myself. Now, it's just my point of view. And it bothers me to ride down the road or even get a Christmas card, and I get them every year that sign Happy Xmas. You know what that does? That takes Christ out of Christmas. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. And there's it just psychologically tells the world that, hey, it's just an Xmas. And Christ has nothing to do with it. We're marking him out. And so I never do that. And this man that I'm talking about, that uh, Regina said, I love how you decorated and you can see Jesus in the store. And he said, without Christ, and he made the statement to me uh, one time, I never use Xmas in sending out any gifts. If I can't take the time to sign, if I can take the time to sign my name, I can certainly take the time to sign his name. Because he's more important than all of us put together. And so we see that they came into the house. They saw the Christ child, C. The next letter is H. 
The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2 and verse 13, And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Now when the Bible says in Luke 2.13 that there was a multitude of heavenly hosts, you know what a multitude is? It's more than two or three. Uh, it's probably higher than I can count. Some people say, how many people do you think a multitude is? It's a crowd. Uh, probably unnumerable. And I think to myself, if you, and I've been in some pretty good crowds of people at the National Association. Six, seven, eight thousand. Derek's been with me to one or two. And when you get that many people singing glory to God that you know love the Lord, it's just a beautiful sound. I think with people like myself that where people have told me that I can't sing and I can still today see Rhonda's hand as I'm sitting in, in a chair back there behind them and the Smith sisters are singing and I'm trying to help them and Rhonda's <laughs> You know, I think she's leaving me. You know? <laughs> but I found out later it wasn't so. I got through preaching after the girls sang and Bob Shockey was in the congregation. And before I got to the door, Bob got me by the arm and the hand and he said, I want you to know you helped those girls plumb out today. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I said, what do you mean plumb out? He said, you'll figure it out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I can just hear beautiful singing like that. And I'm glad that I've made tapes of the girls singing when they were little. Donna, our middle daughter, has sang at the National Association and got standing ovations at the state competition in Cookville, Tennessee. She went against the first national winner that she had ever went against in competition. The one that she was singing against when it come down to the finalists had already the year before won the national. I don't know who did this. And I probably shouldn't tell it. But I, you know me, I'm going to. Rhonda was her piano player. Rhonda's been playing the piano for years. Thank the Lord for her. Donna was so nervous that she was going against the national women. And at one time, and I might be getting two things messed up, Donna, there was a tie. And they said they're going to have to do it again. Now listen, they tied. So they've got to come back. Donna had not taken anything for her nerves. She runs Rhonda down in a crowd of people and said, Rhonda, give me that pill. It's a tie. I'm going to have to go back out there and run all them people. And I don't know. Rhonda said, Rhonda, I took it. <laughs> she was a piano player. <laughs> so, you know. What do you do? We've had so much fun through the years. It wasn't fun for them right then. And uh, let me tell you how fun can turn bad and be a mistake. In the competition in Cookville, 
Donna goes out on the stage by herself. She sings, she electrifies that audience. And I'm not saying that because she's my daughter, but she got a standing ovation. And they made her go back to the stage and take a bow. We stayed in a motel and cooked for me and Regina and the three girls. But before we left that night, because of the competition, we were told that there was a horrible mistake made. That Donna didn't win. That a young boy that she sang against won. So we would have to bring back the trophy and whatever else. You know how that made Donna feel? How it made us feel? And they went and told this young boy, we recounted and you won. The next morning, the judges went over everything again. They had made a horrible mistake. Donna won by a landslide. They had to go back to that boy and his parents and say, we need the trophy back. Donna really won. We made a mistake. When you get people involved, it don't always go well. Mistakes are made everywhere, but I'm telling you about a child this morning that has never made a mistake. From the time he was a young child in this house, they went to see him and they fell down and they worshipped him. And he worked with his daddy. Not much was said about that up till he was 12 years old. And then he went and he talked to the lawyers and the doctors and the parents said, what are you doing here? And he said, don't you know i got to be about my father's business? He was 12 when he started working for the Lord. He was God. And we see that the third thing that I want you to see after the heavenly host praising God. Man, that makes cold chills run over me now. We see in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as the lamb without spot or blemish, Christ as a lamb without spot or blemish. It says, and we're looking for an R, He was the Redeemer. Redeemed and forever I am. I've said before I, that I've heard three or four versions of that, but there's one that, that it's a recitation. Somebody does. And Lynette Garrison probably will be able to give me the name after church today. But driving down the road a year or two ago when that came on, redeemed and forever I am. And it tells a story about redemption in the song. Some of it sung, most of it recitation. I had to pull a car over because my eyes filled with water. And it wasn't because I was hurting. It was because I was rejoicing that I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so we find Christ the child. We find the heavenly host. We find redemption in Him. And then we find The I, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says that he is called Emmanuel. And then Luke 2 and 7, 
there was no room for him in the inn. So you can use that I in a manual or the end, either one you want. But I love this. And I'll just, I'm not going to do the whole thing. And some of you know the whole thing. So don't let me scare you. Whose son are you? When the doctors asked him. Well, on my mother's side, I'm Mary's son. But on my daddy's side, I'm Emmanuel. God. Ooh. I tell you, that's good preaching. On my mother's side, I'm her little boy. But on my daddy's side, I am God of this world. I am Emmanuel. And the word Emmanuel means God with us. Oh, listen. Ain't many of us, none of us, can say that. Then we find not only is he Emmanuel, we find in Luke 2 and 8, and there were with, the, with them in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. There were shepherds. And you know the word about Jesus' birth was carried to the shepherds before it was to the kings? Isn't that something? That he sent word to the shepherds. The word just common, laboring people out in the field in the hill country, watching their flock. Oh, I can't imagine being there and getting the angel's word. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then we see the tea. There was wise men that presented the gifts that I just mentioned to you today's text. There were three wise men. Now I might say this, but it's something you can you won't forget. You'll forget a lot of the other that I say. They say there's a lot of churches this year not only not having church Christmas, but there's a lot of them not having Christmas place either. Somebody said, why? And they said, because they can't find three wise men. <laughs> you know? And I knew I'd get a bigger life out of the ladies than I did the men. But you can think about that. The Bible says in Matthew 21, 1 through 11, but 1 and 11 says, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And when they were coming to the house, that's the house again that I just read you, they saw the young child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and they worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented the gifts, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, then we come to the M. Think with me. We've got a, a teenage girl that is now away from her mom and her dad and she's engaged to Joseph. And they're traveling. And they come to a town they come to an inn, what we would call a motel. And the Bible says in Luke 2 and 7, And she, being married, brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. 
Mark 2.11 they saw the young child with his mother, Mary. So you can use Mary or the manger. And I could spend the rest of my time on that verse alone because we found out in our Wednesday night study that when they clothed him with swaddling clothes, you look it up. <clears throat> They clothed him with rags. What we would use to bandage up a wound or a cut or a sprain. Or, they wrapped him in rags, bandages that could be used. And they laid him in a manger which was a feeding trough for animals. The one who made the trees that they used to build the house or the inn could not stay in the inn. That'd be like telling Trump he can't stay in the Trump Tower. You know, I know it's got your name on it and I know that uh, you take credit for building it there, but there's no room for you here. There's still no comparison because we're talking about the Son of God that owns it all. And man told him there was no room. Can you imagine telling God there's no room for it? Hate to be that in you. That innkeeper has died. That innkeeper has showed up in heaven at the pearly gates. And I'm just saying, I don't know what happened. But I'm just saying, you think he heard, sorry, there's no room? I never knew you. You didn't fix your reservation. Well, I don't know. That's something to think about. Because you know the story was everywhere. Oh, I could say a lot about that, but I'll get in trouble. So I'm going to go right on. A. The Bible says in Luke 2, 9 and 10, angels that brought the message. It says, And to the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. They should have been. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And I want to tell you something today. There's still not a better message in this world than he's alive and well. Open the door and I said, I need to talk to your mama. My mama said for me to tell you she's not here. <laughs> Kids are being as honest as they know how to be. And I said, well, you tell your mama that her insurance is collapsing. <laughs> mama come out from behind the curtain and said, you can't collapse my insurance. I said, I ain't. You are. <laughs> You're the one not paying the bill. And so, it's you. Can you imagine... Children thinking about Christ and the angels. I love to see children play that part during a Christmas place. And they said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. That means that 
everybody's call. The Bible puts it this way. Many are called, but few are chosen. Preacher, who are the chosen ones? And I know what one religious group says. But I'm telling you, the chosen ones are all those that accept the Word of God and what Jesus did on Calvary. It's not a church, folks. It's not a denomination. It's the born-again believers washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, baptized following Jesus to heaven. Amen. That's the chosen ones. Pray for me. I was asked this week if I would consider baptizing because uh, I forgot the age. How old is she, Henry? Alan's mom. You know. I think she's in her 80s. It's mid-80s or above. I didn't hesitate. I said I would. Now we've got to figure out how to get her in the water. That's another story. But you pray about that. Angels. They brought the message. I bring you good tidings of great joy to all people that will listen. It's a joy. That's why this ought to be the greatest time of the year. Is because we're celebrating His birthday. And then the last one. Talks about the star in the east. Matthew 2 2. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. You're talking about signs in the heaven, they've already been there. We've seen his star. Where they see it in the heavens. Matthew 2 9. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over the place where the young child was. And I want to end with this. The star that went before them, they followed that star until that star stopped and it stopped right over where Jesus was and they found Him. We don't find him under that star anymore. Want to know where I found him? You want to know where you found him? Has anybody explained it to you? You found him at the foot of an old rugged cross. That's where you found him. That's where your sins were washed away. That's where you were introduced to him. That's where you became a child of God. Not in a church. Not in your home. Not in a place of business or school. But you knelt humbly with your heart at the foot of an old cross where He shed His blood to wash your sins away. I don't know about you. But if you do away with the cross, and you do away with the blood, you do away with your salvation. Amen. And Jesus said, if you're ashamed to come and kneel before me, you see, we're either going to kneel at the foot of the cross here as Him being our Savior, or we're going to kneel at the throne of God, Him being our judge. I want to be on this side. I want to kneel at the foot of the cross. And I want that judge to be my best friend.
friend that sticks closer than a brother. Think with me. How long has it been since you nailed at the foot of the cross? Mitchell, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Yeah, Lord, 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 Lord.